Hey, dear friends, this is Reverend Jerry, the People's Priest, a.k.a. Father Jerry, and I'm coming to you today with another teaching on grief and some of the different elements of grief and grieving and the grieving process. We Before, we have talked about um, looking upon fall, the season of fall, the season of autumn, as an opportunity for practicing radical forgiveness and learning to forgive ourselves in particular. Um, I gave you the practice of saying uh, as, a, um, as an extension of your prayer time and meditation time, the practice of saying, I forgive myself for, and then including in that statement, what it is that you feel you need to forgive yourself for. And we also discussed how forgiveness interplays with grief and how sometimes when we are grieving we discover areas in our life, in our relationships, particularly when we have lost someone, those areas where we think, oh, I wasn't a good friend to that person. Um, I wasn't a good mother, a good father. I wasn't a good lover. I wasn't a good uh, whatever it was. And we begin to pressure ourselves and punish ourselves for uh, these ideas of uh, I shoulda, woulda, coulda kind of realities. And forgiveness in the grieving process allows us to say, yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe my mind is just bringing that to my awareness because uh, we now looking back, we see that that situation could have been ha handled differently. Maybe what my brain is telling me is not true. Maybe it's a false narrative that seems very real, but it's not rooted in truth. Whatever that it might be, forgive yourself for that. Let that sit over there in the corner and say, I forgive myself for that. I forgive myself for maybe not living up to... Um, the other person's standards, my own standards, the standards of society. I forgive myself for feeling like I have to meet those standards when maybe I don't have the ability to. I forgive myself for being human and being fallible and not always having enough time, not always having enough patience, not always having enough to give. And that does not change the truth that I am enough and that you are enough and that we are enough. It just means that we radically accept that we are not going to be perfect and mistakes will be made. So forgive yourself preemptively for that. And this is what is called practicing grace. And sometimes grief provokes us because it makes us realize all of these failures, all of these missed opportunities, all these uh, times in our lives where we feel like we did not live up to something or someone. So forgive yourself. Let that, let that dissipate. Forgive yourself. We also talked a bit about the um, reality that grief is rude. Grief pops up on you. It's not linear. It's kind of like popcorn. It goes in and the more pressure comes into our life, the more intensity comes into our life, the more heat comes into our life, the more things kind of pop, pop and pop and pop and pop. And sometimes grief shows up in spaces where we were not expecting it. Oftentimes grief shows up in places where we don't want it to be. Sometimes it comes up when we're doing something that brings us absolute joy. And then we begin to associate the grief and the sad and heavy stuff all with, with that. And then we don't want to do it again. So then we get all upset because now we lost not only someone or something, but now we also lost this activity that, does, that no longer brings us joy. So here we are again, another cycle of another level of intense grief. And... We discussed how in that rudeness, we can help to mitigate and navigate some of it by learning to be, to practice small, gentle, and kind 
do small, consistent little things that help us move along the grieving process. Be gentle with ourselves and one another and learn to practice kindness towards ourselves and one another by speaking good things about ourselves and others. In today's teaching, I wanna talk about the intensity of grief. Grief is very intense. And it oftentimes is an intense uh, experience in certain uh, parts of the grieving process. Some parts more than others, sometimes it's intense throughout the time. And I wanna encourage you that in the intensity of your grieving to remember not to give in to the inclination to want to give up your spiritual practices, your wellness practices, and to give into this false idea that doing nothing will solve everything. That if you ignore it, it it'll go away. And instead, look at it in the face. Look at it in all its intensity. Look at it in all of its rudeness and annoyance and uh, provocation. And tell it and tell yourself that I can handle this. And again, maybe revert back to the small, gentle, and kind. Do just small things. Take small portions of that intensity and, and bring it down a little bit. Almost like a, um, like a volume switch, you know, or a volume level. You just bring it down a little bit to make it a little bit quieter, a little bit softer, a little bit more pleasant. Because you are ultimately the one who controls your grieving experience. And it doesn't mean that sometimes the intensity will be so so intense that you feel like you can't handle it. And that's okay. That's when you rely on the beautiful gift, sacred gift of community and say, I'm not handling this well. Will you pray for me and pray with me? Will you lay hands on me? Will you say a blessing over me? Will you smudge me? Will you um, cry with me? Will you laugh with me? Will you go with this journey with me? Go this journey with me. Also too, I want to encourage you to add um, on the prayer side of this intensity process, add the prayer. Let this move at a, at a pace that I can handle. Creator, let this move at a pace that I can handle. Because so often when the intensity hits us, when it, when it feels like the volume is set all the way to the top, we can forget because of all the noise, all the overstimulation, all of the shenanigans of the grieving process. We can forget that we are the one who's in charge. We can forget that we are the ones who the creator has gifted with talents, with, uh, with desires, with dreams, with vision. We, we lose touch of ourselves. So we can return to that by saying out loud, I need this to move at a space I can handle. And I will only move at that rhythm, at that speed. And set a boundary for your grief, as if it's almost like a person Set a boundary for it. Say, today I'm not dealing with that. I'm not dealing with that level of intensity. I'm moving at the speed that I can handle. So reclaim control of the intensity. It will be intense. And there are going to be days where the volume is all the way up. And it's difficult to lower it, to get it to a more pleasant level. That's when you make this pluck proclamation. I am only moving at the speed that I can handle. I am the one who controls the volume level of my life, of the noise in my life. And also too, lean on your community. Lean on those who are in your sacred circle 
who have been through this before, who maybe have an ability to be more objective than you because they're not in this, this storm with you or not, or, um, are not as emotionally invested as you are. And get their healing medicine, receive that healing medicine from them. Because unlike what our culture tells us, we are not here alone, we are never alone, and we can never fully do anything on our own. We need one another. No one was brought into this world without somebody else. So lean on one another, proclaim today and every day when you go through your grieving process, when it feels like the volume's all the way up, say, I am moving at a speed that I can handle. And I choose to lower this volume to a level that I can handle that's more pleasant. Put that into your prayer life. Put that into your practices. Make sure that you keep those practices up. If you, There are lots of apps for maintaining wellness that you can use. Journal your thoughts. Write down some poetry. Remember to do the other things that we discussed. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for being overwhelmed. Forgive yourself for being frustrated. Do small, gentle, kind. Do small, consistent things. Be gentle with yourself in the midst of the process, knowing that you may have bad days, you may have good days, you may have a lot of days that are just neither good or bad. They're just existing. And also be kind to yourself. And as always, dear friends, remember that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. And remember, you have the right to move at the speed that you can handle. Lower that volume when it gets too intense. And you are loved, you are sacred. And the blessing of the God of peace, the nonviolent Christ and the liberating spirit be with you this day and always. Thank you, much love to you, and keep on keeping on. You're doing better than you realize. Bye-bye.